So there's a lot of speculation about why Elizabeth Warren's reign as the frontrunner is now over, and there's a lot of reasons why I think that she's starting to plummet in the polls. But part of the reason why I think that's the case is because she is not able to not respond to every criticism from her opponents. So for example, Trump called her Pocahontas. What does she do? She creates a video where she goes over the results of a DNA test that supposedly prove that she does in fact have Native American heritage. Um, obviously that backfired and it was incredibly cringeworthy. On top of that, you know, her opponents in the Democratic Party primary pressed her to figure out a way to pay for Medicare for all without raising taxes on the middle class. What does she do? She appeases them by coming up with a plan that would fund it with the regressive head tax. And on top of that, she moved away from Medicare for all by putting it on a back burner and saying she's going to prioritize a public option. So when people see this, they realize that she's weak. She can't not respond to every criticism when her opponents, they're criticizing her because she's running against them, right? You're never going to be able to appease your opponents, and they're just going to keep moving the goalpost. What you need to do is create good public policy that is good public policy. Don't take into account what your opponents want because you're running against shills who don't actually care about the American people, and they're just making bad faith arguments against Medicare for all because they are bankrolled by the health insurance industry, but because she couldn't help herself, now people see that she's not the real deal, she's weak, she caves to pressure, and as a result, would probably be a liability against Donald Trump in a general election. Now, the ladies on The View decided to speculate about why Elizabeth Warren is starting to plummet, and they came to the opposite conclusion. Rather than, you know, logically deducing that she probably is starting to uh, plummet because she's backing away from Medicare for All, well, they're saying that she actually embraced Medicare for All too much. And that's what turned off voters. And the rationale that they use was just nonsensical. So this segment is probably one of the worst that I've ever seen from The View. And... I've come to the conclusion that anyone who watches The View is coming away much stupider as a result because they just, they're not just out of touch, but they're uninformed and do zero research. Take a look. So Senator Elizabeth Warren was gaining ground in the polls for a minute, but according to another poll, you know, I hate polls unless I'm <laughs> dancing on them. Uh, I'd love to see that. What, me dancing on a pole? We'll show you the pictures. Joy and I have pictures of her. We do. Um, so uh, <laughs> half of her supporters seem to have bailed on her in the past month. Uh, and some folks are saying, well, did she push for Medicare for all too hard? Why are people moving away? Or is this just part of the natural thing that happens? You're hot for a second, and then you're the cooler person, and then the next one is hot. Or is this what normally should be happening? Mm -hmm. Well, she was attacked because she was the front runner for, yeah. for a, a second. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think her, uh, the weakness is that Medicare for all because it's just not that popular across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, I think many people feel, well, everyone should have health care, but if you have health care that you enjoy now, you don't yeah. want to give that up. Right. So, you know, that, that's a, a sticky point for her. And also, she never, in my view, really explained how she was going to pay for it. Talks about the wealth tax a lot. Does but Bernie does explain it? it? I don't no. Know. He no, doesn't well, explain it problem. either. <laughs> and he actually takes credit for it, right? He says, yes. I wrote the bill. He yeah. sat, it, sat at the plan. table and said, you know, I, I, I did that. Yeah, like, but how do you pay well, for it? Well, and it sounds like in her plan, if you actually dig deep into it, the taxes could go up for the middle class to get this Medicare for all. And I've struggled with this. Well, she says that's not she's true. She's talking about she's, But I don't think anyone understands. She says it's no deep. one really understands, to your point, where the money's going to come from. But it's yeah. going to have to come from somewhere because it's a lot of money to pay for that. I think she Amazon. thinks this, this country, tax. Amazon can pay for it. Amazon can pay for This country was founded on, on choice, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and this, I think, goes totally against what this country is and what it always has been. And you can't take choice away from the American people. Mm -hmm. And that's been her problem from the beginning. And, and we've talked about You say this all the time. She's They're not going not to beat Trump because people are scared. People are scared yeah. of those types of policies, and I think rightfully so. Has and if you want someone that's going to beat Trump, well, I think they're They have Obamacare. It. I think my feeling is the people who are saying build on it are doing a better job of uh, convincing the American people and not scaring yeah. everybody. Because I have friends, Republican friends and uh, Democrat friends. Who other than me? Besides you. <laughs> <laughs> who, who say that they will not, they hate Trump, the Republicans I know. 
or I wouldn't be friends with them. <laughs> That's not true. Happy That's Thanksgiving. That's not true. From sure. But I mean, I don't expect my friends to be in love with Trump and hang out with me, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. But um, they also, they say, not Elizabeth Warren. No, 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 no. And I had a big argument with them in a way because they want to hang on to every dime they've got, these people. They're very rich. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, having said that, I don't think it's plausible that she could, she's going to make a dent with that, with this plan. I, I think yeah. you have to be practical in this country. It, yeah. Isn't you she know? shifting her, though, her, her position plan was, a little? It was the Green New Deal of health care. It didn't make any logical sense for how anyone's going to pay for it. And by the way, I know you hate polls, Whoopi, and you do me a solid by placating me because I love them. But a big jump, 28% to 14% since October, is hemorrhaging. She's flatlining right now. And it's very, if you're on her campaign right now, you should be very, very, very concerned seeing the trends going down, Mayor Pete's going up. But again, oppo dumps, everyone, it makes an impact. And I think she hasn't done an efficient and, and concise enough job explaining just the simple question, what for people who don't want it taken away? Uh -huh. What are they going to do? The people who don't want their health care taken away. Americans do not like things being taken from them across the board. Well, not at this point, since so much has been taken yeah. away yes. from them. You know, we're 90 mm -hmm. 99 percent of the folks are working to pay those damn taxes. Pay that segment made my blood boil. That was infuriating because that was nothing more than lies from elites who literally never have to worry about health care ever in their lives. They will never go bankrupt, never die if they don't have health care. And they talk about choice as if we have a choice now. Our choice is to either die or go bankrupt if we don't have insurance. That's the choice that we have. But our current health system is phenomenal because it works out for them. People who are multimillionaires who, again, never ever have to get on the phone and fight with Aetna to get them to cover a bill that they're refusing to cover that they say that you know, their coverage uh, expands to or some shit like that. I, I just, this shit legitimately had me fuming. So let's get into it. People who I generally agree with more times than not, Sonny Hostin, horrible, horrible here. She said, uh, the weakness with Elizabeth Warren is Medicare for all because it's not just that popular. It's just not that popular across the board. Medicare for all, not that popular. This is a policy that 70 to 90% of the Democratic Party base supports. And there were a couple of polls back in the summer that showed that a majority, not a plurality, a majority of Republicans supported Medicare for all. So when you say that it's just not that popular, you're a fucking liar and you're out of touch because it is popular. Now support for it has increased or decreased, excuse me, because shills like people to judge have taken money from the industry and then been arguing against it using industry talking points. But nonetheless, even though support for it has decreased, it's still incredibly popular. Medicare for all has been a long-term goal of the Democratic Party for decades. So for you to say it's not popular while well, there's a Democratic Party primary taking place, like who are you speaking to? Who are you speaking to? It's popular within the Democratic Party and it's even popular with some Republicans. So that's just the bold-faced lie. She also said, also Elizabeth Warren, in my view, never really explained how she's going to pay for it. Sonny, I don't support Elizabeth Warren, but she released a gigantic fucking plan that explains how she's going to pay for Medicare for all to the penny. Now, I don't like the way that she funds Medicare for all because, again, I am in favor of a 7.5% payroll tax to cover the bulk of that federal increase in spending. So I don't like the head tax that Elizabeth Warren is proposing. I think it's regressive. I don't think it's the best way to fund Medicare for all. That being said, for you to say she hasn't proposed the way to pay for it, again, that's a bold-faced fucking lie. And then Joy Behar chimed in and asked, well, does Bernie explain it? Sonny Hostin responded by saying no. Bernie has a list of options as to how we fund Medicare for all. Now, Bernie doesn't fund it to the penny. Nonetheless, the way he funds it is more progressive. And that's assuming we even have to fully fund Medicare for all and shouldn't just deficit spend because it's a crisis and it would require that. But nonetheless, again, um, we're not dealing with good faith actors. These are out of touch elites who don't want the system to change. One, because they don't want their taxes to go up. And two, because it's working out phenomenally well for them because they have money. They're comfortable. Abby Huntsman then chimed in and said, it sounds like taxes on the middle class are going to go up and nobody really understands where the money is going to come from. Except 
it doesn't really matter if taxes on the middle class go up in actuality because if you're going to net save money because we're getting rid of these monthly insurance premiums, what difference does it make? Well, the difference that it makes is that people who make more than 400000 per year, like them, every single one of them, they will actually be paying more for healthcare, and they don't like that. So they don't care that the peasants will go bankrupt and die. They just don't want things to change for them. So they're trying to convince their viewers who trust them that being against this policy that could one day save their lives is uh, beneficial for them. I mean, this is gaslighting 101 right here. Now, Sonny Huston chimed in again and said, I think that Elizabeth Warren believes she can pay for this with a wealth tax. No, again, not an advocate for Elizabeth Warren, but that's just a small portion of how she plans to fund it. Like, these people did zero research. I mean, it's unbelievable that they feel confident talking about this as if they are, you know, an authority on this issue when they didn't even do a five-minute Google search. I mean... How do you not feel some type of responsibility to at least arm yourself with a little bit of knowledge before talking about this really complex issue? This is a life and death issue. And the fact that you didn't even bother to Google anything about Medicare for All or Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders' plans, I mean, it just shows that you are bad people because you're apathetic about the plight of the working class as you claim to care about the working class and taxes going up on them. Like, be real. You don't give a fuck about taxes on the working class. You care about your own wallet. That's what this is really about. Now, Abby Huntsman said, this country was founded on choice. This, I think, goes totally against what this country is. You can't take choice away from the American people. Yes, because if we decommodify healthcare and remove that profit motive from our healthcare system, that's taking away choice. It's like saying if you support abortion, you are in favor of baby killing. That's the level of, you know, disingenuity that we're dealing with here. Again, we have no choice in this system. We can choose to either die or go bankrupt if we don't have insurance. And the choice that we want isn't between public insurance or private insurance. The choice is just seeing whatever doctor we want. Medicare for all expands choice. But these are liars here. These are rich people who have all the choice that they want. If there's a doctor that they want to see in fucking uh, France, they can fly there and not even see a dent made in their funds. They're elitist hacks. And they don't give a fuck about you, but they want you to think that they care about you. Joy Behar then says, we have Obamacare. I think the people are doing a better job of convincing the American people and not scaring anybody who are saying we should expand Obamacare. Now, the evidence that Joy Behar points to... Well, her rich friends are against it, and they want to keep every penny that they have. Boo fucking who? Because rich people don't want their taxes to go up to pay for Medicare for all, then we should keep Obamacare, where people still die every single year. Thousands die every single year because uh, rich people want more money. Hey, Joy, how about this? Why don't you go fuck yourself? Tell your rich friends that. Tell them to go fuck themselves. Now, Meghan McCain who is the worst here, says Elizabeth Warren hasn't explained, quote, what for people who don't want it taken away? What are they going to do? The people who don't want their health care taken away. Americans do not like things being taken from them. I mean, you can't get more disingenuous than that. Listen, you fucking moron. If you had a turd in your hand and it was the only thing you had to eat and you were going to eat it and I stopped you when I said, hey, put the turd down. I'm going to give you a sandwich. Would that qualify as taking something away from you if you're getting something that's better for your health? I mean, you are a stupid motherfucker if you literally believe that Medicare for All is taking away something from people. It's not taking away anything from people, but it is taking away something from corporations, a profit motive. But guess what? They shouldn't be allowed to profit off of our health. We should have a healthcare system that has the goal of delivering healthcare, not profits to the shareholders of private health insurance companies. But because Meghan McCain is uh, the daughter of parents who are rich beyond anyone's wildest dreams, her mother, I think, inherited billions of dollars, she doesn't have to worry about it. So again, this is about rich people basically telling you in a nutshell, fuck you, I got mine, don't be in favor of this policy that would potentially save lives, save your life one day, definitely save lives every single year, don't be in favor of that. We don't like it personally, 
because our taxes would go up slightly. So we're going to tell you it's against your interest and actually your taxes are going to go up. And we're going to say this while concern trolling and pretending as if we care about you when in actuality, we're looking out for our own asses. I mean... People need to stop watching The View. Like, why do people watch shows like The View? Why do people tune into Real Time with Bill Maher? All of these centrist shows are making people fucking stupid. It is making our electorate less informed. And you really can't have a democracy if you have an uninformed electorate. You just can't, right? Because people aren't able to sufficiently evaluate the political choices and policy proposals before them because you have people who are smear merchants who are self-interested lying to them about things like they're literally trying to get you to think that medicare for all is bad because um well it's taking away choice i mean if you believe them then you're just as stupid as them i'm sorry because like people have to fight with these health insurance companies as michael moore put it recently on msnbc we hate our private health insurance providers, we hate them. We can lose it, right? If you lose your job, you know, if you have healthcare that's tied to your employer, then uh, you lose your insurance too. I mean, what a disgusting, morally bankrupt, unsustainable system we have. And you have these elites here who are rich and incoherently telling you that you should support this system. I mean, what a fucking joke. So bringing it back to Elizabeth Warren, she's not plummeting because she embraced Medicare for all too much. Bernie Sanders is rising, and we know that he actually supports single-payer Medicare for all. Elizabeth Warren is plummeting because she backed away from Medicare for all, and it is a popular proposal. But these elitist assholes wouldn't know that as they look down at us peasants from their ivory towers.